For Lonnie Money, wood carving was literally in his blood. His great-grandfather came to Kentucky in the 1880s from Switzerland, where he was a master carver. The realities of life led Lonnie to a variety of jobs, including running a dairy farm. After exhibiting at some art shows in the 1970s, he slowly began to build the business as the artwork he and Twyla were creating started to take off. I was taking money from this and, and keeping the farm up. And I think I thought, well, you know, it's kind of crazy. I'm doing all this work out here running these cattle around. Why well, don't I just sell the cattle and go in and just do this? And that's what we did. Where some would say Lonnie was born an artist, Twyla was not. But she reached a point where she knew she needed something, anything in her life, to fill what she saw as a void. We didn't have children, couldn't have children, and I, like I said, I love children. I needed something to occupy my mind, and I was making a bed one morning, and I said, Lord, you've got to give me something, or I'm going to go crazy. And this is when it started. When Lonnie first asked her to paint some pieces, she didn't think she had the skills for it. My mom, I had helped her. She would go around paint to uh, older folks at uh, hot houses and things, and I helped her some in that. That's all the painting I had ever done. I had no interest in art in school. When he said that, I'll try anything. <laughs> so I got the paintbrush and the paint on the kitchen table and started painting. And that started a collaboration celebrated in a new book, Lonnie and Twyla Money, 50 Years of Kentucky Appalachian Folk Art. Now, like many in the genre, the Moneys created things they knew, namely animals. Many of the whimsical pieces they produce come from real-life experiences they've had on their farm, including one time when a neighbor told Lonnie that his chickens were suddenly disappearing. I seen this fox go up through there, and he had this big chicken by the neck, and it throwed over its shoulder. And I went back there in the back, and there's white feathers all over that place where the fox, they go get a chicken every day, I guess, and they, they run out of chickens, you know how the foxes are. So I, I, I put the chicken in the fox's mouth. The Kentucky Folk Arts Center at Moorhead State University is one of many museums that have the money's work as part of their folk art collections. Staff there say younger people are now collecting folk art like what the monies do, in large part due to the fact that it's, well, fun. I, I really think a lot of it is just the whimsy that they have with their work. I mean, you take a look at the works that they do with the gourds and things. It's just, it's really quite fun. The monies are known really throughout the United States. I mean, if you were to tap into any of the museums around the country that have any kind of folk art collection, the monies are probably going to be part of that collection. While the end result is fun, getting there takes work. Lonnie is not only a brilliant woodworker, he's a good businessman. He knew he and Twyla would have to produce large numbers of items to make ends meet if they were going to be full-time artists. Some people say, I don't see how in the world you could stand to do the all them Christmas ornaments you do. But see, each one of them, to me, that's, the, that's what I get out of is making it. It's not really that I've got a piece, you know, when I get it done. It's in the making of it. The creative part's what I, I, I love. I used to count how many pieces we did a year. I would count how many Christmas ornaments. In one year, I counted, we'd done 2,400, and I said, forget it. I'm not <laughs> counting no more. We first met Lonnie and Twyla some 20 years ago here on Kentucky Life. They said then that they had a hard time keeping up with demand for their work, and that demand has definitely not slowed down. Twyla's studio is in a converted building there in East Bernstadt that also serves as their gallery while Lonnie works next door in a barn he's converted into a three-story workshop. The barn is a testament to his ability to make and create things. It's filled with tools he's modified and pieces waiting to become art. Twigs he finds are hung on a long string so he can look at them until, as he said, one speaks to me. Syrup bottles from many meals they shared at their favorite breakfast spot decorate a staircase. And hundreds, if not thousands, of patterns are stored in an organized system that Lonnie built where he converted pants bought at a flea market into big bags with wooden handles. Now, I got to ask you, Lonnie, most people would probably just go get some bags. Well, you know, I'm, you know, we are people that uh, just grew up uh, hard. I don't like to say poor, 
You know, we're not poor. We just don't have any money. So, I mean, we're that type of people I was. And, you know, we bags cost a whole lot more than pints. The money's ability to work together is so refreshing in this day and age. But beyond that, Lonnie and Twyla's <laughs> love for one another is evident and has resulted in a marriage filled with laughter, creativity, and some amazing art. He's a special person, I'll just tell you. Don't tell him I said that, though, but he's very special. I, I have a pretty good feeling he'd say the same thing about you, Twyla. <laughs> well, probably, maybe. <laughs> but we have a lot of fun together. How in the world do you stay together for half a century and be able to do an artistic thing like this together. I mean, I couldn't do this without her. I mean, I could do the work, make the pieces, but I couldn't paint it and be like, you know, it wouldn't be like her. So it makes both of us make a hold, and that's kind of what a marriage is, you know. Hey everybody, I'm Chip Holston, your host for Kentucky Life. Now, if you like that story and you want to explore more of Kentucky, click right here to see more stories from our show.